last time. <laughs> Enough horsing around. Hello, and welcome back to Loreplay, Bloodborne, The Old Hunters. I am Dr. Faust, and we're back in the uh, prison that is apparently above the underground corpse pile. First thing I wanted to talk about today was a little bit uh, regarding Ludwig. Uh, the boss from the end of my last video, who, uh, as some may remember, was the first hunter of the Healing Church. Uh, not to be confused with the first hunter ever, but the first hunter of the Healing Church. And as we encountered last episode, he had transformed into a terrible beast. I'd also mentioned last episode that I thought that Ludwig was the second most tragic figure in Bloodborne, mainly based on his dialogue after you defeat him. He seems to be confused and not know uh, that the Healing Church was involved in uh, basically experimenting on the citizens of Yarnum. He mentions that he saw the Thread of Light when he acquired the... Holy Moonlight Greatsword, and never really wanted to know what it was. That seems to indicate that he, while a high-ranking member of the church, uh, by being the first hunter, also uh, the hunter that started enlisting citizens of Yarnum to uh, become hunters, that Ludwig really had no idea what was going on. Now to do a little bit of speculation, as I want to do, but I suspect that Ludwig may have in fact been experimented upon by the choir uh, in order to uh, grant eyes. One of the things that I had noticed about his uh, beast form was that it was malformed and... Uh, a little bit inelegant. All the beasts that we encounter uh, in the game have a uh, definite uh, form factor that isn't apparent in Ludwig. He has uh, vestigial limbs, he has the weird secondary head that's lined with eyeballs, and that was actually the first thing that gave me my uh, cause to pause regarding whether or not the choir had experimented on him. I believe that at a certain point, Ludwig's uh, transformation into a beast had become somewhat apparent, and that the choir, under the pretense of maybe uh, helping him, decided to conduct their experiments on him, which would explain the second vestigial head lined with eyes, and uh, his uh, bizarre water-based arcane attack, which, uh, as we will find out later, has some basis in uh, the areas above the prison. As far as the prison itself goes, this area was used to uh, lock up troublesome hunters that uh, weren't co uh, towing the company line, as it were. Uh, hunters that had gotten a little too close to the secret of the Healing Church, mainly that uh, all of Yarnum seemed to be a uh, 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 breeding ground for tests and experiments that they would uh, conduct. Are you a hunter? That's very odd. Do you hear the toll of the bell? Liar. Such pettiness will be your undoing. The beasts you seek will not be found here. 
go back to your hut. And if you have the chance, put this night behind you. Places better left untouched. Secrets better left alone. Only a fool would so brazenly roll. This guy. Uh, I've got some things to say about uh, this NPC. Uh, but that will be a little later. Uh, for right now, the most important thing that anybody needs to know is that he does not want us here whatsoever. Um, if you answer uh, no to the bell, he tells you to go back to your hunt and not concern yourself with anything in the dream any further ahead. Which I think is interesting, because when I answered yes to the bell, I simply assumed that it was the bell of the Astral Clock Tower. But uh, he is clearly speaking about some other bell. And here we are in the Grand Cathedral, uh, with a slightly different layout than uh, the actual Grand Cathedral in The Waking World. Uh, it has this little uh, trapdoor sarcophagi, much like the uh, side church in the uh, next to the Chapel of Odin, uh, which leads down to Old Yarnum. Uh, interestingly enough, this uh, trapdoor leads down to the Old Prison, and this section that currently ho houses a number of rats uh, is what is the entrance to the Grand Cathedral in the real world. Um, I have a couple of theories about uh, the differences uh, in the layout between the two cathedrals. Uh, in fact, actually, I should say the three cathedrals because there is the other cathedral which I failed to enter earlier and I'll pay for uh, with uh, a lot of lost time and a... Uh, fade cut a little later on, but the Grand Cathedral, uh, the third Grand Cathedral, looks more like a hot field hospital and a research facility. Uh, what were the windows uh, in the actual Grand Cathedral? Our uh, bookshelves here, and we have a number of beds uh, with a uh, uh, blood transfusions and uh, an unfortunate victim here. Um, another thing to notice is the fact that it shares the exact layout of the Grand Cathedral minus uh, the statue that wasn't there in the original Grand Cathedral. And here we have Vicar Amelia, um, human Vicar Amelia. Which is uh, interesting to say the least, because last we encountered her, she had become a beast, and she had to be put down. Uh, she's accompanied by this black church hunter, uh, wielding Ludwig's holy sword, and I think the repeating pistol? Um, I had had a theory at an earlier point that this... Uh, associate of Amelia's may have transformed into the cleric beast because she was using uh, Ludwig's holy blade um, until I realized that the uh, sword hunter badge that gives you access to Ludwig's holy blade is the luminous sword hunter's badge as opposed to the regular sword hunter's badge uh, and thus she uh, if she were the cleric beast it would uh, be more appropriate that she be wielding a Kirk hammer as opposed to Ludwig's Holy Blade. Um, and Amelia goes down like nothing. Uh, she's using one of the new uh, arcane uh, hunter's tools, the Dark Sky Eye, which is just a uh, fireball projectile attack. Uh, doesn't actually do fire damage, but acts much like a fireball. And here we have the surgery altar, which just get a good look at the imagery that's going on with this bad boy. Corpse on the table, 
hooded figure surrounding it. And my favorite aspect, yeah, the little beast hiding right under the table. Um, there's a lot of symbolism, including a big empty skull. But uh, the one of the things I wanted to talk about mainly with the statue is the central figure, which I believe is Willem, uh, Master Willem from Burdenworth. Uh, I believe that the current layout, or not current layout, but the nightmare layout of this particular Grand Cathedral is uh, a memory of how the Grand Cathedral once looked because as we'll see in a little bit, there is uh, a higher level to this Grand Cathedral, an area that we couldn't access before. Before we can access that upper floor, uh, fade! Back to the more familiar looking Grand Cathedral, uh, including steps and a flaming cleric beast. Uh, just for specifications, this is the first Grand Cathedral in the Hunter's Nightmare that, once again, more accurately represents the actual version of the Grand Cathedral in the Waking World. And this is where the DLC starts to lose me a little bit with a... Uh, um, with a bit of asset reuse, because this cleric beast is Lawrence, or at least how Lawrence appears in the dream. Um, there is another creature in the Chalice Dungeons, a boss, uh, known as the Bloodletting Beast, that more accurately represents and uh, looks like Lawrence. And I say that only because the skull in the actual Grand Cathedral in the real world is uh, a beast skull uh, with that has a uh, very prominent cleave mark in its head, and the uh, bloodletting beast encountered in the Chalice dun Dungeon has the same exact wound extending from its head all the way down its body. Um, so... We have a monster in the Chalice Dungeons that seems to be exactly what uh, Lawrence turned into. And when we encounter him in the Hunter's Nightmare, we get a flaming cleric beast. Um, not really happy with that asset reuse and not really happy with that explanation. But we've got an eye pendant and now we can get the surgery altar to work. And welcome to the Research Hall. Uh, the School of Mensis in the main game uh, basically serves as the uh, mm, closest thing to a main antagonist that uh, the story of Bloodborne has, since everybody in Bloodborne uh, is basically a monster. But... Uh, the choir, the other uh, hand of the healing church, gets surprisingly little play. But man, does all of the choir's filthy little secrets get brought up here. Uh, the research hall is a institution of horror and madness with uh, some of the most awful experiments that the Healing Church perpetrated being conducted on the uh, citizens of Yarnum, And 
to make matters worse, this isn't the worst thing that the uh, choir's done, the healing church has done. And there we have our first encounter with one of the research hall patients. Um, I really, really love the uh, patient design. Uh, strikes a very, very uh, clear silhouette. Uh, large bulbous head, sp sp spindly limbs. It's a really great design, and I really like the way that the patients are used in this area, uh, because we have benign patients, like the NPC searching for his eyes in the poison pool, and then we have aggressive uh, patients that are sprinkled out through this entire area. Um, the thing with the aggressive patients that I really, really enjoy is the fact that they have a variety of attack patterns. Um, they all look alike, but they do not attack or move in the same way, which gives uh, an interesting bit of enemy variety without actually having to create a bunch of different enemy types. As for the research hall itself, it's the Duke's Archives 2.0. It is uh, a labyrinthine structure with a movable staircase uh, and multiple floors. Only it is a little less horizontal than the Duke's Archive uh, and a lot more vertical, which uh, uh, lends a bit of... Uh, interesting level design uh, when it comes to navigation. You go through this area once in one state and then you go through it again in another state and you start to realize just how much you missed ascending the research hall by going up at the very beginning. quick point of interest that I wanted to bring up regarding the patients are their heads. Um, it's hard to tell, but their heads are actually obscured by uh, bags uh, seemingly of some kind of burlap material, but as you can tell just by the general shape and the movement, their heads have become horribly deformed and distended. Um, we'll learn later how the Healing Church has been doing this, and maybe why they've been doing this. Um, though, spoiler alert, it has to do with the Great Ones. But everything in Bloodborne secretly has to do with the Great Ones. I do have to say that I really dig this, uh, this feeling of lost abandoned experimentation that the research hall gives off. Um, it hasn't been maintained very well, and because the patients are wandering the area, it seems like it's been completely and utterly abandoned. Um, which really gives a feeling as to, uh, like a quick retreat or this wasn't working out so why even uh, continue this research anyway um, which is kind of interesting because it seems like this area was pulled into the nightmare but it also feels like a memory and I'm gonna call it here Thank you once again, everyone, for joining me on this episode of Let's Play Bloodborne the Old Hunters. I'm Dr. Faust. <laughs>